Hi y'all, bonjour, hola, my name is Trish. If you're new, welcome. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design this one night with the kin. So without much ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the first image. So I'm gonna drag and drop in this image and I'm going to go ahead to scale it, double click, and I'm going to go ahead to rotate it, hold down shift to set it at a 90 degrees, and I'm going to go ahead to scale it like this and double click to accept. Now we're gonna make a duplicate of this layer, Command J, make a duplicate. Now the top layer, we are going to blur it out a little bit more. So go under filter, choose blur, Gaussian blur. Now you want to set this to about 5.8 or however you want. Go ahead and click OK. So the next step is to add a solid fill. So I'm going to click on my top layer, click on my adjustment, choose a solid color. Now we want to choose a black. Go ahead and click OK and we are going to reduce the opacity to about a 39. To click on my adjustment and set a gradient. Now I'm going to click on my gradient and I'm going to click on the color and I want to set it to a more deeper orange and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click on the far end and do the same. So I'm going to choose from this or you can even choose to set that to black and I'm going to go ahead to click OK. Now we want to change the angle so that it's at the corner um, somewhere like so. So I'm going to go ahead and change my style to radar and I'm going to make sure that my scale is at 100%. Go ahead and click OK. Now we want to move this to the corner. So double click back on your gradient. Now you can move it and set that right there. So with this set, we want to go ahead and begin to type in our text. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my type tool and I'm going to choose a very basic font, the Century Gothic, and I'm going to go ahead and type in one night. type in the word kin, highlight, and we are going to change that font to the times. But with this set, we want to go ahead and add in the information on the bottom as well. I'm going to double click and change the font and we are going to go with the B-Buzz. Now, I'm going to go under my property and the character, and I'm going to increase it like that a little bit, and then you wanna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in this image and I'm going to set it over the one night with the kin. I'm going to double click to accept. Now I'm gonna make a duplicate, Command J, because I'm going to set it in two different locations. Now I'm gonna pull one to be right on top of my Broadway, make a selection of the one night with the kin, and I'm going to group it. So now what we are going to do is, if I turn this off, you see that I have the one night with the kin, and I wanna, clip that to these text. So I'm going to turn it on and since I already have this in a group, I'm going to hold down options and I'm going to go ahead to clip it. So once I clip it, you notice that it infused it to the one night with the kin. Now I want to go ahead and do the same thing with the Broadway show. So I'm going to hold down options and clip that as well so that that image is applied to only that. I'm going to click on my group layer. It will open up the layer style, add a drop shadow, double click inside. Obviously it's too much. So we want to go and reduce it and make it very small. So you can still see it, but it's not too much. Go ahead and click OK. So with this set, we are going to go ahead and bring in our crown. So I'm going to drag this. Once we have our image in, you want to take off the background. So go under your property, 
first of all you need to convert your layer into a smart object once we have it now if you go back to your property now you can see the word remove background so we want to go ahead and click remove background and we are going to rotate and set this somewhere like that i'm going to double click reduce it a little and set that right there double click and it's taken shape already now we see that there are a few imperfections and we want to clean it so you want to pick up your lasso tool you want to zoom in and you want to go ahead and just um, trace in this area just like that and i'm going to make this quick now um you can take your time and trim off all the areas that you don't want now the only thing is that because we are going to do so many layering of this crown it doesn't have to be perfect in terms of um, taking off the excess um, around the crown itself so once you have your crown all cleaned up we want to right click on our layer max thumbnail for the crown layer and click on apply layer max so now that we've done that now we want to zoom in and we want to cut the bottom portion of our crown pick up your lasso tool again and we are going to go ahead and just trace now you can also use the pen tool to do the same thing but i'm just used to using the I'm used to using the lasso tool so I'm just going to do that and I'm going to pick up my eraser and I can go ahead to erase this portion I know I don't need it command D to deselect so with this set we are going to go ahead and add a little bit of a shadow effect on our crown below our crown so I'm going to click on my new layer icon and I'm going to flip my foreground to black, pick up my brush tool, and I'm going to make a big dab, just like that. Pick up my move tool, and I'm going to hold down shift and make this smaller, and I'm going to go ahead and set that on the bottom, just like this, so that it gives us the illusion of the crown shadow effect. What we are going to do is we're going to add a little bit of an exposure adjustment to brighten up our crown and i'm going to go ahead to move my slider so it's a little bit more on the bright side so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in and i'm going to click on my exposure command i to inverse it i'm going to zoom into that area and i'm going to flip my foreground to white and I'm just going to paint this area to make this a bit more brighter for the crown. I'm going to reduce my brush head and paint this area. Now I'm using my left and right bracket to just increase my brush size. So once you're satisfied with this, you want to go ahead and add a curves adjustment. So I'm going to click on my adjustments, choose curves. And we want to play with this a little bit and see how rich we can get our crown to look. And I'm going to hold down options and also clip this as well. So we have this gold effect on our crown. Now I'm going to finish this off by adding a color look up. So go under your adjustment, add a color look up. We're going to change the option and we are going to choose a horror blue. Now we want to apply it just to the crown. So hold down options and clip it. So that way it only shows up on the crown. Now, obviously we don't want the effect on some areas. So once you have this all set, we want to go ahead and add in a bit of a shadow around the crown so that it blends in. So click on your top layer, add a new layer, pick up your brush tool with your foreground as black. We are going to reduce our flow and I'm just going to go ahead and increase my brush. And then I'm going to dab in some areas just to 
make it look a part of the full image so i went ahead to add in a few more information on the bottom now the icing on the cake is the sparkle lights that is coming in from the far upper corner so before we do that we are going to click on our um we are going to click on the top layer add a new layer and we are going to click and choose this color and we are going to pick up our brush tool and we want to increase our brush head using our left and right bracket now i'm going to dab in this area um, to make this little splash of color but i want to put that layer below the crown i'm going to zoom uh, make my brush a bit smaller and do the same thing in that area so i'm giving the crown background a bit of a sheen so with this set, we are going to go ahead and bring in another element. And I'm going to go ahead and drag in this image and I'm going to drop it. Now, once you have this image in, obviously we want to set it all the way at the top and we want to get just a portion of this light source, which is coming in from this angle. Now we can choose this or that, but I think it's easier to just cut off this section increase increase it like that and set it somewhere here and i'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can all see it now i'm going to set it somewhere here and i'm going to pick up my brush bigger and i want to i want to go ahead and basically do something more like that and i'm going to Go ahead and erase the, the portion below. Now I'm going to reduce my brush head and I'm going to try and I'm going to try and paint in this area so that I still get the light rays around this area. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode to lighten. So we have this effect and I'm going to set that on the back like that. And I'm going to go ahead and make more copies and I'm going to move this and pull it all the way below my crown so it's underneath and I'm going to make another copy command J make a copy and I'm going to move this out and scale it a little bit like that so we get a realistic light source so with this light source all set now you can obviously go ahead and reduce the light source so that is not too much i'm going to add a layer max to this one pick up my brush tool and i'm going to reduce my brush head and i'm going to erase some of the light ray on top of some of the text so that you can still read the text very well but we sort of have this light ray effect that is still happening in the background i'm going to go ahead and add a gradient effect one more time change this to radar and we are going to go ahead and click ok double click back in it and we want to move that and set that at the very top corner now i'm going to reduce my scale and i'm going to go ahead and move this in a little so go ahead and click ok so with this set we are going to go back to our image and I am going to go ahead and bring in a second image that we will use. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. I'm going to double click to accept. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase this, make it much bigger like that. And I'm going to double click. Now I want to go ahead and change the blend mode of this to lighten so we can see it and it adds some dramatic effect to our image now i'm making this a lot bigger and i'm moving this and setting this somewhere here like that now if it's too much you can go ahead and reduce it now i'm going to go ahead to make a duplicate of this command j make a duplicate and the one on the bottom i'm going to click on filter blare gushing blare and I want to blare this out a little bit like that. 
and I'm going to go ahead to click OK. Now the one on the top, I'm going to go ahead to move it out even further like that, spread it out and do something more like this. So I'm going to go back and pull in this image. I'm going to change the adjustment to lighten. I'm going to go ahead and move it and set that right here. Now I'm going to pick up my eraser. Notice there's something small on the bottom. So I'm cleaning it and we are going to make a copy. Command J, make a copy. You can even make this a bit smaller and we are going to set that right here. Make a copy, command J and set that right there. Now we are going to go ahead to reduce this a little, set that right there. I'm going to make a copy, command J, and I'm going to set that right here and make it a bit smaller so we have it right there. So guys, I went ahead to add in my signature. So the next thing we want to do is that we want to click on our um, text, the group text, uh, One Night with the King, and we want to go ahead and add in a levels adjustment just to brighten up our um, font. So I'm going to go ahead and clip it. And now I'm just going to move my sliders to basically bump up the colors in the textured material. We want to click on the top layer, go to your adjustment, add a color look up. Now you want to change this to three strip. Now you notice that it really sets off the final design. So with this set, we are going to go to the very top, hold down shift option, command E, make one file, go to filter and choose camera raw filter. Now at this point, you have the option of playing with your um, temperature. You can increase your contrast if you want. You can also take back um, your whites to make it a bit more lighter. You can increase your vibrance if you want to enrich your final piece. Now you can do so many things. You can brighten it up a little and you can also increase your blacks if you want or take it back a little. So you have something like this. Go ahead and click OK. So you can see this is the before. Now this is the after. So guys, this brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope that this was very helpful. I would like to see your rendition of this tutorial. So please send me your final image on Instagram so I can share it the next time we have a live tutorial. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Bye all!